guys have any question before we start our lecture today? Okay, so if you remember yesterday, we started the discussion of the equivalent circuits of DC machines. And at this, at this point, as I mentioned yesterday, you might be confused a little bit about motors, generators, what's the difference between them. But at the end of the day, or at the end of the week, you will reach the conclusion that both of them, they behave similar, similar fashion. The differences are in the power of flow itself, from mechanical to electrical or electrical to mechanical. But if you understand one, you understand both. I mean, both of them, they run in similar way. We know the differences in terms of how we convert from electrical to mechanical, from mechanical to electrical. But the equivalent circuits are the same, except the direction of current. We have always this mechanical side, either in the input or the output. We have always this electrical side, either in the input or the output. And that's it, I mean, we learned last week the basic operation concept, the basic structure, and yesterday the equivalent circuits of both motors and generators. What is left is to study the characteristics of each type. So we're gonna talk about characteristics of motors, characteristics of generators, different circuits, and that's it. We'll start with motors, but you're gonna, or you did experiment yesterday or today about generators. And later this week, you will do also another experiment about motor. So yes, the sequence is a little bit different, but as I mentioned, I mean, you're dealing with machines, so the, the, the order here is not that important here. So, <clears throat> we'll continue with studying the characteristics of motors. And if you remember, this was the last slide that we discussed yesterday, which is about some useful equations that we know about motors and generators. So the first equation is the voltage induced at the armature is related to the flux, angular frequency, and machine constant. This flux can be replaced by IF because there is a direct relation between them. So the equation will be K IF omega. This is KVL equation from the equivalent circuit itself. So nothing in you here. And also I explained yesterday the concept of developed power, and we're gonna see it also again today, which is equal to omega t, which is the mechanical side of the developed power, equal also to the electrical side, which is EE, the armature voltage multiplied by armature current. Another equation which relates the torque to the flux and IA, and again, we can replace flux with IF. We can also substitute equation two to three, and we will get what we call the speed equation, which relates basically the speed to all other parameters in the electrical circuit. So one one important basically characteristics we can study or performance indicator, similar to what we did to the transformer. Transformer, the output is electrical, so we studied, if you remember, voltage regulation. How the voltage changes from the full load to the no load, or no load to full load. Similarly, we can do for machines, and it depends what's the output that we are talking about. 
if it is a generator where the output is electrical, we're going to talk again about voltage regulation. If it is a motor where it, the output is mechanical, we're going to talk about what we call speed regulation. Okay? So what is speed regulation? Well, simply speed regulation is the difference in speed, which is one of the parameters of, of the output, between the full load to the load, low, no load condition. So there are two parameters for the mechanical side omega and torque. Omega is the angular frequency or speed. Torque is torque. If it is electrical, we have two parameters, voltage and current. So here we're talking about the speed regulation. So let's, let's see the equation, which we already know, but now with different parameters. Speed regulation now will be omega and L, which is the angular speed at no load condition, and radians per second. Omega FL, which is the full load speed, divided by full load speed. So what we are saying here is that the speed will be different from if there is no load connected and if there is full load connected. So what type of load we are talking about in motors? It's not electrical load. It's mechanical load, right? So if we have mechanical load connected to the motor, the speed will be different. And how different is the speed? This is the speed regulation. Since this is a percentage, we can replace omega with n, where n is the revolutions per minute, RPM. So we can use omega radians per second, or we can use n, which is the RPM. Both of them will give us the same percentage. This is the power flow in the motor, which is a very important concept here. Why? Because here we are basically explaining how the power will flow from the input to the output. The input is electrical, and this is the input here side. And the output is mechanical. So if we want to calculate what's the power of the input is basically the terminal voltage multiplied by terminal current. If we want to calculate the out the, the output of the motor, this is output. It's the torque multiplied by omega, where omega here is called omega m because this is mechanical speed. Torque applied which is whatever torque you apply to the load. Between the input to the out and out, what we have losses, similar to transformer, of course. But losses here, we have two types of losses. One of the, one side is electrical or electrical losses, the other side is mechanical losses. And between them, it's what we call the developed or converted power. So we have the power input, which is electrical, and after that we have I square R losses, meaning that we have all the electrical losses from the equivalent circuit. So we have the armature losses, I square RA, which are the losses and the resist because of the resistor of the armature winding, the field losses, the losses because of the winding of the field, and the third one is brush losses. Do you remember the brush? Well, in the brush, which is basically the component where we collect the voltage, we lose some of the electrical power. So if the voltage across the armature voltages, across the armature terminals is 100, 
you don't collect 100. At the brushes, you just collect, for example, 98. That's it. So the losses because of the brushes is equal voltage of the brushes multiplied by the current in the brushes or the armature current. So how much is this VBD, which is the voltage lost because of the brushes? Well, the rule of thumb is that it's equal to volt. Okay? This is an estimation. Of course, more number of poles, more voltage dropped. But again, as I mentioned, usually it is estimated or approximated to be 2 volts. Yes, Nader? Yes. If you remember, we said that in the armature, this is rotating. And this is where the voltage is induced. How we can get the voltage to the outside of the machine, or how we can apply the opposite, how we can apply voltage and put it inside the rotary part here? Well, we use like wireless connection, which is which are these brushes. So brushes here. They just contact, just touch this basically commutators and this rotary part. And either inject the current or collect the voltage. Okay? But they cannot collect the, the, the full amount of voltage. You lose part of the voltage because of this wireless contact and the amount of voltage that you lose is 2 volts so if the voltage here is 100 you collect here 98 clear another and yes it is physical I mean a component you see it inside the machine you are welcome any other questions So these are all the electrical losses and the electrical side. Then after we remove or extract or have all the losses here, we have the remaining, which is called the developed power, which is equal EA IA. And this developed power is now converted to mechanical side. And this amount and the mechanical side is equal T induced, this is torque, omega M. Okay? Then what? Then we have all the remaining or all the mechanical losses and the mechanical side, such as mechanical and magnetic losses. Core losses, you are familiar with this, hysteresis and eddy current. Mechanical losses, friction and windage losses, stray losses, which is basically everything else. So you are not required actually to know all of these things. They are usually called the rotational losses. Indicating that this is because of the rotation. All of these losses because of the rotation. So after you extract all of these or have all of these losses, you end up having the pure mechanical output, which is applied torque multiplied by omega m. So my question is, what's the difference between, and please notice the difference, this power and this power. Well, this power is VTIL. This power is EAIA. So there is a difference, and yes, this should be larger than this. What about this power and this? Well, this torque induced omega m, this is torque applied omega m. So, yes, this 
should be greater than this. Okay? Because of the losses, this one is greater than this one. Because the direction. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Doctor. The torque induced is it in the shaft or where exactly? Yes. Any mechanical action is in the in the shaft. Because I mean, how we how would we lose the torque if uh, if, uh, if it's already in the shaft? Well, this is what you see as an output from the shaft. This is more of a theoretical. This is, as I mentioned, before the losses. Okay. Okay. So if you don't have any losses, both of them, they will be equal. But because you have losses, this is what you see at the output. This is theoretical quantity. Okay. Again, at home, make sure that you revise this slide and, and understand basically how the power is flowing from one side to another side. Because when we come to the generator case, and you can jump in later and see the generator case, you will see that we, are, we have the same flow, but now different direction. So for the generator, this one will be the input, this one will be output, that's it. طيب دكتور ممكن نعرف وش أك وش أكبر لوس من هذه ممكن يكون؟ It depends on the design of the design and of the the design of the machine. So how you design the machine, you can for example make the friction losses is less than the electrical, but usually the electrical is more than the mechanical. Okay, but in some situations, for example, with old machines, you start to have more friction than electrical side. So yeah, I, I cannot actually say or for guarantee that the electrical loss is more than the mechanical or mechanical more than the electrical. Yeah. It depends on the design and age of the machine. Okay. That's why you do maintenance, for example, because in maintenance, you're trying to improve all of these quantities. Either you do rewiring, for example, for the machine, you replace the wires, you replace the brushes, you yes. improve the friction. Um, yeah. Yes. So now we're going to go through different configurations or equivalent circuits of the motor. For example, this is the separately excited circuit. So we have the field circuit here with RF. This is, as I mentioned yesterday, it's just the symbol of the field winding. And this is the adjusted resistance. So it's basically one RF here. Voltage applied, we have field current, so the result will be that we are generating flux here inside the machine. And then we have the armature circuit. And without even telling you that this is motor, how do you know that this is motor here? Depends on the current direction. Yes, the direction of current is from the input here, electrical input to the armature. So this is a motor case. So if I ask you to draw the equivalent circuit separated for the generator. If only the, the, current. Current side. Yeah, the current will be like this. That's it. Okay. So that's it. This is the equivalent circuit. Of course, the output is mechanical here. You don't see it, but it's there in the armature or behind the armature and the input is electrical so you apply voltage and current here okay what type of equations we have in this circuit similar to what we had before or discussed before ea equal k flux omega 
we know that we can replace the flux with IF. Torque is equal K flux IA. Again, similarly, we can replace the flux with IF. IF is v VFRF, so this is just Ohm's law in this circuit. And VT is equal AA, RA, IA. So VT is this voltage plus the voltage drop here. And of course, the current is usually written as IL, indicating that this is load, or IT, terminal. So both are okay. It's the same as the armature current. They're not different. Oh, sorry, line current. I said load current. Line current. This is the shunt circuit. And again, both shunt and separately excited, they are similar in, in analysis. And actually, even in operation. Again, this is the line current, which is the input. IF will be down in RF. And after that, if we apply KCL here, also we can get IA. So the equations will be, again, same thing. KVL, similar to the separately excited, VT is EA plus IARA. So VT is, of course, larger than EA. Why? Because this is the direction of current. So there would be voltage drop between them. KCL IA is equal I line minus IF. IF will be the voltage, terminal voltage divided by RF. So the difference here is that we don't apply external source to the field. We use the same input voltage to the field also. Okay? An example. 25 kilowatt, 250. So we should be familiar now with the first few numbers that we get for any machine. So what's the meaning of 25 kilowatt and 250? The power. The power and voltage. voltage. Yes, rated, right? These are the rated values, the power and the voltage. Shunt motor, so we have the type here, it's shunt motor has an armature resistance of 0.25 and a field coil resistance of 125. At rated terminal voltage, so what's the rated terminal voltage? 250. The motor current is 12 amp and runs at 1000 RPM. So the motor current is 12 and the speed is 1000 RPM, and we have RF and RA. Find the machine constant. Yes, this is N. Good point, yes. So the question now, How we can find the machine constant? Uh, from the voltage equal K flux times the omega. From this law, First, from this law. we draw the circuit. Flux can be represented as I. Okay. So, yeah, good point. We have the equation, which is Do you agree? Yes. Yes. Okay, and this is shunt motor. So, yeah, we can draw the circuit. So RF is equal 125 ohm, and this is 0.25 ohm, and this is EA, which we don't know yet, 
How much is the voltage? 250. How much is the current? 12. And why we are specifying the current in this direction? Because it's motor. motor. The motor. It's a motor case, yes. And the IF will be down. Also, you specify this. IA will be to the armature. Also, you specify this. So, we need to find this. So, we need to find EE, IF, omega. Can we do this? Let's start with omega. We have the speed, but it's in, in RPM. We need to find it in omega. Multiply by 2 pi and divide by 60. Yes, 2 pi over 60. There is an equation to find omega is equal to 2 pi over 60 multiplied by n, which is the number of uh, RPM. So we have we have the two the RPM which is one thousand here. So done. What about IF? We have the voltage. The yes. Voltage, divide voltage divided by resistance. Resistance, which is one twenty five, which is equal to. Right? This is the resistance, not current. This is ohm. This is the resistance, not IA. And this is the objective, actually, is to find now IA. So after we find this IF, yes. As you mentioned, IA now will be what? The subtraction of the 12 overall minus 12 minus 10. Why we are finding IA? Because we need to find this. So this now will be equal to 250 minus 10 multiplied by 0.25. Do you agree? Yes. 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 And that's it. Now we know what is what is this? Omega. We know IF. We know IA. So we can easily find what is K. So any question regarding this? And you have the answers here in the slides. And the K will be 1.18. Victor, we can know why the IA was mentioned Because this is KCL, meaning that The input current or the line current is equal to 12. This is given. Yes. We calculated this to be 2. Going down. IA now. You can see it here. 12. 2 will go down. So the remaining will be, will be 10. Yeah. And we need that in the voltage. Yeah. We need it for the voltage equation so you can you can apply kvl here say that the input current is equal to the leave entering current is equal to leaving current so 12 is equal ia yep, plus right. 2 okay yes. so the machine constant the meaning of machine constant is that it's machine constant it should not change right it's a constant for machine so we should not change this and this is the second part of this example which is basically it's the same example here, but the requirements here is that find the speed, speed regulation, 
and torque at full load conditions. So what do we mean by at full load conditions? Full load conditions. Yeah. At okay. rated value. So my question is, is this rated value here? No. So are we using 12 here? No. 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 It is rated no. value. No. Maybe, maybe not. Yes. It was given as a load, meaning that the input is a 12 amp. But maybe at the rated load, when the machine delivers the rated power, the input is more. And this is now, this is now where it comes the 25 kilowatt power. Remember that this is electrical input. So the electrical here is input, right? Yes. So the rated electrical input is a 25 kilowatt. Okay. Let's draw the equivalent circuit again. Okay. If you remember, the current here was 12, right? Yes. My question is, if the power here is 25 kilowatt, which is the rated power, how much current we might have here? Applying K IV. 100. Yes, 100. Why? Because IL is 25,000. Over. Over 200. So it was 12, but at full load is 100. So that's why I say 12 is not the rated or full load conditions, right? It is partial. It means that between the no load and full load, something between. So you need to, to understand the concept here. The concept is, is that you have no load. When there is no load, uh, there is no uh, there is no load connected, and you have full load when there is a rated load connected, which is the maximum basically, and there is anything between them. So you might have any situation between the no load and full load condition. So the full load is equal 100 amp. Victor, this this doesn't depend uh, on the speed. Speed is an output, so this is an output. Okay. So what we are saying is that this machine is working at rated load condition, meaning that it consumes the whole power for the machine. Okay. So it depends on the power that is taken. Yes. For example, before in the previous part, we said that it's 12 amp. Okay. Now yes. we're saying that at full load condition. What about the current here? So this is 100. Victor, mm -hmm. what about if, if we have different power, for example, uh, 250 watt, if we divide by 200 and we get it less than 12, should we consider 12 itself? No, 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 no. You, should, you consider whatever I'm asking you to find. I, I mean in full load condition. And full load, so what you are saying is that at on full load, when you calculate the current is less than the 12. Yes. It means that the current here, 12, is more than more than the rated current. Y yes. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense here. Mm -hmm. So always we find the current. If it is a full load condition, yes, you you find the current. And at full load condition, the current should be the highest current you have in the machine. Okay. Okay. 
So what is the current here at field? Yes, which is two again, right? What about the current here in the armature? Nine So the question is find the speed. Can we find the speed? Speed is the same. We found it. Yeah. It's the same equation, right? Yes. Is it this one at 1000 RPM? No. That's, this speed is for the 12, right? Yes. What we can do, we have this equation, which is E E K. K. Do we know EE? -E? Not yes. yet. Yes, not yet. But it's we can. 20, 250 minus 98 multiplied by 0.25, right? Yes. Do we know K? Yes, for instance. We found it. 1.15, I think, or something. Eight. Do we know, do we know IA? Oh, sorry, I have, I have, yeah, I said, yeah. Good point, yeah. Doctor, how do we know K? Since we, 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 we don't have to use the omega that is given in the question. So it should be different than the previous question, isn't it? The gigabyte. So this is, yes, two, two um. Again, what's the question again? K shouldn't be different than the previous question. No, no, no. Because no. if we are using the same machine, it's a called machine constant. So it's constant for the whole for the whole machine. Whatever you are operating this machine at different points, K is the same. So when we calculate it, and we are gonna learn on Wednesday again another technique. When we calculated K from that operating point from the twelve and one thousand. The same key can be used for another operation point at full load condition. You get my point? Yeah. When we calculated K before in the previous part, it was for 12 amp and 1000 RPM. But the same K can be used for any operating point for the same machine. Okay. So this is what we are doing here. We are using K. We found I F E A. So we can we can find omega. Then we can find N. Or you can keep it omega, for example. Okay. Yes. What about the speed regulation? Uh, it is the full load. No load, no load or the twelve. Do we have full load? Yes. Plus. Do we have no load? Yes, no load it's 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 not given clearly. In this example, he is using the previous part, part A, as no load condition. Is it really the no load condition here? No. Yes. But again, in this example, he is assuming that the no load is a 12 amp, so he's taking this as 12 amp. But it should be more clear saying that at no load condition, the motor current is a 12 amp and runs at 1000 RPM. You get my point? So, Doctor, what, what is the current for the actual no load? Good point. Let me explain this because this is a very important concept again. 
So the question here, if we have no load, what should we expect as a current? Uh, not really. So this is, there is no mechanical, so this is no load. There is no mechanical connected to the output, right? Yes. Okay, my question is, do we have speed? Yes. Yes, you should, yeah, there should be speed. Speed is okay. Do we have torque? No, I don't. No, no mechanical power. Torque is zero. Good point. So at the output, torque is equal to zero, and omega is equal speed, rated speed, whatever is the speed, or no load speed. Okay. We have, after that, losses here, mechanical and magnetic losses. At developed or converted power here, you remember the converted power? Which is basically the power that developed from mechanical to electrical. Do we have omega? Speed. Yes, yes still we have speed. Do we have torque applied? No. We have torque. Why? Why? Because we have. Well, because, because of the losses, right? I mean, you cannot say that we don't have any losses in the mechanical and magnetic side. If you have losses, it means that because of the friction and all other things, you have some mechanical power to feed. So, my point is that if we have here omega and torque, which is unusually small what does that mean for EA and IA they are not zero yes if, if if we don't have torque if we say that this is zero do we have voltage no no yes. be zero we have voltage but we don't have current So yes, the current here will be equal to zero. This is if we assume that the torque is zero here. So what will be the currents in the circuit? Well, zero current, voltage yes, but no current. So there is no power on the electrical side, no power on the mechanical side. What about the current here? What about the current here? So, so this is the ideal no load condition, not the ideal no load condition. This is if we assume that rotational or mechanical losses are equal to zero. If rotational and mechanical losses equal to zero, mechanical power of developed power is equal to zero. So torque is equal to zero. IA is equal to zero. And the only current we have it here will be circulating because of the voltage, because of the RF which is 2 amp. Okay? No, no, forget, forget about the torque. I'm saying here that we don't, we don't have torque at the output. We don't have torque developed here. So we are assuming that we don't have any mechanical losses, any magnetic losses here. So no developed power, no electrical power, and the only current we have is the 2 amp. So the direction of power flow will be like this. The input power will be how much? 500, right? Which is 2 multiplied by 250. So the 5... Because of the current here. Because remember, the current IF is equal what? Equal voltage divided by... Resistance. Resistance. So the whole... The input power is 500 at no load. And the whole 500 will go to what? Will go to the losses in this. Here is zero. Here is zero. Clear? 
Doctor, can you go back to the previous uh, slide where it shows the uh, losses, all the losses? Well, I cannot go because I will lose this slide. But I will go after I finish this explanation. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's assume now, which is more a practical assumption, that, well, torque is not zero anymore. And this is, by the way, true. Not the output torque. Yeah, yeah. Inside. Yes, the output torque is, as we mentioned before, so this will be, This will be 2 amp again. This torque is still zero. Why? Because there is no output, mechanical output. So you are not connecting your machine to anything at the output. But because we have a speed, because this one is rotating, imagine the machine, what will happen, the shaft. Rotation, the friction. because of the friction and other mechanical and magnetic losses, you have some power here. You need to feed. Let's say that it's, it's 100. Let's say by, by just some 100 watt losses in this. Does that mean that this is zero? No. No. It cannot be zero. We have very small torque here. And the torque here, be, not because of the power output. Yeah. This is because of the losses. Since we have now small torque, does that mean that this should be zero? No. no, because because also this is converted, right? So this also will be small value. So let's assume that this small value is equal 5. What does that mean to the current here? So equal 7. To, so compare it to the previous one. Now it's going to be equal to 1,750, right? The input, which is 250 multiplied yeah. by 7. Part of it will go to what? To this. Another part will go to what? I'm not sure. And the remaining part will go to the losses. Is there any output? No. So whatever you have input here is basically feeding all the internal losses caused because even if there is no load connected here. Small amount of current. Small of, yes, small amount of current. And the smallest amount of current that you can have will be what? Two amps. This is assuming that you don't have any losses in this rotation, a lot, right? Yeah. And that's why, that's, why in this, that's, why, that's why in this example, he's assuming that this is equal to 12. Victor, can we uh, calculate the torque, the feeding torque? Yes, you can. You can, using the developed concept, yes, which is this. You can find what is basically EA, IA, for no load condition, if you know what's the current. Speed 1000, for example, in this example. So you can find the torque here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? So I will go through the solution very quickly because I have a meeting at 1.30 and I really apologize we don't have office hour today. So, uh, so this is the terminal current or line current and this is IA, EE, which is less than, of course, 250. And this is the speed at full load, 94.98. And now we can get the speed regulation which is now 
10%. So it means that the speed is changing 10% from full load to no load condition. And this is, yes, this is the question here. Find the torque at full load. This is at full load. Since oh, yeah. we know IA, IA, omega M, we can find the torque, which is 23267. Okay? Yes. Any question regarding this? So, yeah, go to the... Yeah, yeah, the question was for the full load, find the torque, yes. Okay? So I will see you, inshallah, on, on Wednesday. Yeah, let's Yes. Uh, I think the problem in the...